simply a case of the value on offer was just too hard to resist. I mean, looking at the screen all day, it was just a sea of red. Now I look at it and it's a sea of positive numbers. I've never seen anything quite like it. We saw the market down more than 5% at one stage and then to finish up more than 1% with more than $10 billion worth of stock going through the market. There are a lot of theories going around the market today on what caused all that buying. Of course, we have seen a lot of short sellers hitting, especially our banks, over the past week. And a lot of those short sellers would have been closing out their positions ahead of that FOMC meeting tonight in the U.S. But it does look like the turnaround in the Australian market really also coincides siding with money markets in China. Money markets just phasing out the possibility of more interest rate hikes and that seems to have been a positive not only for the Australian market but for the Shanghai Composite which is on positive ground as well and has seen a pretty big turnaround. All eyes really now on that US FOMC meeting whether Helicopter Ben's going to come down with some more money and provide money supply and inflation for markets as well as commodities. But if we have a look at the Australian share market, the banks saw an incredible turnaround, up by 2 to 3% by the close. This morning when the market started, it was an absolute sea of red. Most sectors getting smashed by 4, 5, 6%. And if we have a look at how the market closed, this is a market map, you'll see the companies that gained in green and the companies that lost in red and you can see there's lots of green across this board. The banks were the main gainers at the end of the session but we also saw our resource companies doing well. A few sessions you know we've been talking about the, the falls and you know very sage advice I suppose the idea of not wanting to ca catch a falling knife. What do you think now I mean have we reached the bottom are we looking to see an extended rally or is it just going to be do you think more of the volatility? I think the key in this market is to understand what the concern of the market is and then whether or not it's been dealt with. It is in corporate balance sheets which are in a good place after the global financial crisis because we have seen companies deleveraging and earnings still pretty strong. What is concerning markets though are more countries balance sheets, the US, the Eurozone, Japan, the three largest economies in the world with a huge amount of debt and deficits as far as the eye can see it. And we saw that really coming to a head this weekend when we saw Standard pause coming out and downgrading the long-term US debt from AAA to AA plus with an outlook negative and that's the main concern of markets the eurozone debt crisis the US uh, debt burden as well and what this signals to the market is that we are going to see probably five or more uh, years of very slow growth coming through from the US from the eurozone as well as from Japan and that's really what markets have been pricing in all eyes are on this FOMC meeting tonight whether Ben's going to offer I guess a bit of stability to markets. But this is really seen as a short-term solution. They're not really dealing with the underlying issues, which is the debt, how they're going to reduce that debt, whether it is through getting more growth through tax revenues or trying to stimulate demand in the US and getting tax revenues that way. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the main issues in the market still stand and really I guess if uh, Ben Bernanke does come out with QE3 markets are a lot more skeptical because we are seeing markets back at where they were before uh, the first round of money printing QE2 and if we see a third round a lot of the markets are going to be asking themselves you know is the US just really kicking the can down the road once again to deal with those issues maybe one or two years down the track. I guess if you look at the US market versus the Australian market and perhaps even the Chinese market or any market around the world what is evident is that quantitative easing has diluted the US dollar and what you are really seeing is money supply inflation that is impacted on the uh, the US indices if you have a look at the US market in Australian dollar terms or conversely the Australian market in US dollar terms what you're going to find is performance is very similar over the last two to three years and that's really because a lot of that has to do with currency we are on a global stage the US dollar has been diluting its currency and that's reflected in the performance of its stock market compared to Australia and China. And unfortunately, just because your economy is doing well does not translate into strong gains in the share market or the stock market. I mean, here in Australia, we think that our economy is strong, but we know that China is a lot stronger, growing at 9, 9.5%. And if we have a look at China's stock market, well, why isn't its economy um, really being reflected in China's stock market? This is China's Shanghai Composite over the last 52 weeks. You can see it's a 
clear downtrend, a clear bear market. And you can see that over the last two years, China's stock market hasn't been doing too much at all, although its economy has been growing quite strong. So you could say that the Australian economy is much stronger than the rest of the world. You could say the fundamentals are good here, but unfortunately that's not what drives stock market gains. Yeah.